Approximately 70 million years ago, the first of the Cannabaceae, or cannabis family of plants, speciated, known as Amphinanthae. Aside from it, nine other genera are currently known. Cannabis, Celtis, Catechma, Droniera, Humulus, Lozanella, Perisponia, Pterocheltis, and Trema. Aphinanthe is believed to have developed in Asia, particularly in what is now known as China, but spread to other parts of Asia, such as the Indian subcontinent, and even to European areas. Paleobotanically speaking, cannabis has had a very tumultuous history, and our understanding of where and when it speciated is still somewhat contentious. But some research reports put its speciation point at the Qinghai Lake area in the province of Qinghai, a part of the Tibetan Plateau. For millions of years onward, cannabis, as well as humulus, the other most related genus in the Cannabaceae to cannabis, have grown and expanded and established in many parts of the world, even before human intervention. In 1946, a research report by Cho documented a pest on cannabis, particularly hemp cultivars, that was native to the area. Its name is Lycorma delicatula, the spotted lantern fly. Besides cannabis, this insect can feed on over 70 species of plants across 25 different families, which is a very gregarious and prolific amount of plants. It has a preferred host of Chinese sumac, or tree of heaven, Elianthus altissima, and while its preferred host is also an exotic invasive in many parts of the world, so too is this pest. Lycorma delicatula feeds on many agricultural crops and has the potential to cause major catastrophe and extreme economic ruin for those crops. Lycorma delicatula is currently invading South Korea, Japan, as well as the United States of America. In particular, four states of the United States have been documented to have Lycorma delicatula. It was first detected in Berks County, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, in 2014. Currently, it is found in Delaware, Pennsylvania, Virginia, and New Jersey, and is likely to expand to other states if it is not controlled. In the five years that it has been in the United States, control has not been achieved, and it likely will not be achieved if strong motivating factors are not considered. If control is not achieved, the spotted lanternfly is projected to exist in places where the production of grapes, hops, and cannabis will play host to the pest, and millions of dollars, potentially even billions of dollars of agricultural revenue will be lost due to the damage incurred by the pest. The spotted lanternfly is incredibly gregarious. Not only does it feed on many different plants, it also reproduces very quickly and abundantly, with females producing 60 to 70 eggs in clutches, and a lack of native predators will mean that most of the young will survive to adulthood and reproduce. While research is being done to find biocontrol agents that are necessary for the control of the spotted lantern fly, research is slow and expansion is fast. If farmers do not take precautionary measures now, it is likely that they will have to deal with the pest in full force and not many options in the way of solutions that won't be incredibly draconic or expensive. Viticultural pursuits in California are already gearing up for the spotted lantern fly. Well, how big would you say the hemp market is in the U.S. right now? So it's actually bigger than many people would think. Uh, hemp has been sold in the U.S. for some time now. So for 2018, I mean 2017, uh, that market was estimated to be about $820 million. Uh, most of this is coming from imports as uh, the U.S. hemp market is not really that big production-wise, but that's growing substantially. So in 2016, it was just under 10,000 acres. Uh, that has already grown to almost 80,000 acres in 2018. Wow, and a lot of farms Farmers in a lot of different states are hoping that they too will be able to grow hemp. AFBF economist Michael Nev, you always appreciate hearing from you. And extreme costs in the first few years of infestation are expected, especially for those who are less protected than others by being smaller or unable to apply certain control techniques. For the cannabis industry, this is likely to be an extremely large problem. Already are other pests such as the rice root aphid, Ropalosiphum rufi abdominale, and the hemp russet mite. Aculops cannabicola have caused hundreds of thousands and even millions of dollars in revenue damage. And with a lack of biosecurity measures being practiced, 
it is likely that these pests will continue to be a problem in nurseries that do not observe basic SOPs with regards to integrated pest management and biosecurity hygiene. Under more stringent conditions, the spotted lanternfly was able to prolifically produce in four states and is expected to expand. The burgeoning cannabis cultivation market is much less stringent, simply due to its newness, at least officially, and these conditions are extremely exploitable by the pest. Large operations, particularly hemp fields, are probably the most at risk because the cannabis plants themselves will be relatively unguarded. And if other agricultural crops are in the area, they will likely also become hosts themselves. Only a concerted, holistic management system will be able to appropriately defend against Lycorma delicatula. Pests do not consider human boundaries when they expand. They simply do. And historically, many other pests that are able to expand unchecked do become a huge economic problem. It is likely that this will also be the same for the spotted lanternfly until appropriate control measures can be assessed and utilized and implemented en masse. It is hard to project the time that this will take, but it will probably take several years, at least until the spotted lantern fly reaches California, Colorado, and other places that are large cannabis producing areas. It is hard to predict exactly when these solutions will arise, and if they will arise in time to stem the damage that will come. Oh my goodness, he's freaking out! <laughs> Wow, this is insane. Oh wow. Awareness is the first defense against the spotted lanternfly. The second is vigilance and preparation. The proactive culling of its favored host would be an incredibly good benefit with regards to stemming the tide. Physical barriers are also an option. The spotted lanternfly is rather large when compared to other pests that are quite damaging. And things like mesh screening and insect screens may be an option, although, again, on a large scale, this is not necessarily feasible or practical. The application of noxious chemical agents is also not desirable. And current biocontrol agents are known, but their appropriate utilization to maximize their control is not. Buveria bassiana and Bacoa major are two entomopathogenic fungi that have been found to be lethal to the spotted lantern fly. Owen Sirtis cuvinae is a parasitic wasp from its native territory that is also known to parasitize the eggs of Lycorma delicatula. These and other agents may be an appropriate response, but in traditional agriculture, biocontrols are still difficult to use because their production is just too costly and their application and labor costs associated with their usage can also be incredibly costly in an already costly business. Research on the interaction between the spotted lantern fly and cannabis in particular, for obvious prohibitionary reasons, is lacking. And so understanding the direct relationship between the spotted lantern fly and cannabis is muddled and difficult for which to come to a conclusion. However, taking other agricultural crops into consideration is likely to become a huge problem. And hoping that the pest simply won't affect you has historically not been a very good move. Security through obscurity is the weakest form of security especially when your area of operations is large, multiple acres, even hundreds. If you believe you have found the spotted lantern fly in your fields, it is important to report and document this pest immediately and be proactive with countermeasures. Look to your local university agriculture extension agent for more information in your area and keep on the lookout for the spotted lantern fly. For more information, feel free to contact me or your local university extension agent or possibly even a university agricultural department for more. We're very worried about spotted lanternfly arriving in California, inadvertently becoming a potential invasive insect pest that could do a lot of economic damage. So we are planning a biological control program in advance of the anticipated arrival of spotted lanternfly into California. If we are to use natural enemies to suppress populations of spotted lanternfly to lower levels, we need to understand whether those parasites that we bring from China will have an adverse and unwanted effect on the native insect fauna here in the southwestern parts of the United States. Information regarding this pest is constantly changing, so be sure to find resources that will be helpful for you and your particular area. Only through a proactive, combined holistic strategy can the spotted lantern fly be combated effectively. Without a combined effort, it is very unlikely that the spotted lantern fly will be controlled easily and with the least bit of cost incurred. 
the spotted lanternfly can cause total or partial crop failure. And for a cash crop like cannabis, this is not a viable option. In addition to the other resources that I've mentioned previously, if you are interested in more information, feel free to check me out at Zenthanol on YouTube or Sync Angel on Instagram. I'd be happy to take all questions and comments and would be happy to help people who are trying to be proactive. In addition to the resources already stated, I would love to be a resource for those who are particularly anxious about this new pest from the old world, from the original point of cannabis speciation. I will be posting additional information and new updates on this channel, Xenthanol on YouTube, or Sync Angel on Instagram, where I've charted the expansion of Lycorma delicatula when information becomes available to me. It is my hope to prevent the cultivation problems associated with this pest before they start. And if you are too, then the time starts now. Please be proactive currently before the pest becomes a major problem. I hope this has been an informative primer and look forward to our mutual success in combating this dangerous pest.